The Blitzporker won the plate final of the Paris Sevens this weekend, beating Australia 17-7 to remain second in the series standings. Meanwhile, in Super Rugby, the 12th round saw some rather disappointing results for the South African sides. To discuss these further, I'm joined by Sport 24's Garen Lamley and Rob Howing. Gentlemen, good morning. Thank you very much for joining us today. Good morning, Nick. Rob, the Lions were, again, rather exciting to watch. A great result for them against the Blues. The Kings-Cheaters game was called the worst game of the <laughs> weekend. Uh, but what went wrong for the Stormers and the Bulls? I'm going to disagree with you on that one. I think the worst game of the weekend was that very game you mentioned, uh, Sunwolves Stormers. Um, the Stormers absolutely plumbed the depths. Uh, I don't think I've seen a worse uh, Stormers game mm. in probably six or seven years. Um, <coughs> I, I, think I can think of a few a little bit before that, but uh, in the last six or seven years, I don't think I've ever seen the Stormers as switched off for a game of rugby as they were. I think they really just felt they were going to amble into Singapore um, and run away with five points. Um, mm. And when they discovered that, hello, this, the Sunwolves are actually here to play, and hello, there's a little bit of humidity in the air, which they should have known about before they traveled, uh, perhaps questionably a little bit late. I think they only went on the Wednesday. So again, perhaps just a little sense of complacency. Um, there have been denials from the camp uh, about that complacency, obviously. Um, but, uh, you know, um, I don't think it'll fool too many rugby fans. Mm. Uh, you could just see that they were not switched on. I, I knew from the first five or ten minutes of watching that game that I thought, you know, this is going to be a strange day at the office. Um, they were just awful. They were all over the show. Um, uh, tactically, strategically, nowhere. As I say, mentally uh, not switched on. Um, the only bright spark uh, by a country mile was Peter Steph Dutoy, uh, who really saved their bacon with, with a really stunning second row performance. Mm. I thought Cheslin Colby didn't do too badly at, at fullback. And then later when he was sort of in the scrum half position, which raised uh, interesting new thoughts again mm. um, about the possibility of him switching there. Uh, down the line. So that, that really for me was the, uh, the low point of the, the weekend. I never expected Cheetahs Kings to be a classic. Um, mm. You know, neither team uh, in contention anymore. Probably tiring a little bit, you know, certain players getting fatigued, uh, injuries creeping in, uh, lack of depth in each squad starting to be exposed a little mm. bit. But I suppose a bit of credit to the Cheetahs. They did, they did get a comfortable enough win in the end. Um, and the Lions were superb. Um, considering the terrible conditions at Ellis Park, where I sort of thought maybe this is going to be a 12-6 kind of game, <coughs> uh, instead they actually turned on the style. Elton Yankees um, pulling the strings mm. superbly well at fly half, really making another big statement about his ability to play not just in dry weather on a firm pitch, but also uh, in a sort of uh, you know quagmire condition. So uh, a real uh, feather in his cap. Uh, Lionel Mapue, uh, terrific at, at centre. Mm. Jakob Creel, so a few um, Springbok candidates uh, sticking their hands up for the Lions, who have now become the South African side um, with the most points of all the South African teams in Super Rugby. Uh, they've gone ahead of the Stormers, and it's a little bit of a damning reflection mm. on the Stormers and Bulls, who have lost, uh, who have now fallen behind, despite being in the supposedly easier group, who only play Australian teams. Um, so a real feather in the Lions cap that they actually are, are effectively the leading South African team. Um, having played New Zealand teams rather than Australian teams, which sort of you sort of think it should be the other way around. Mm. So uh, plenty to think about in the next in the next few weeks. Mm. Karen, do you think perhaps this uh, new perceived expansive approach that the Bulls and the Stormers are sort of trying to apply is not really working for them? Um, and or did it, like Rob said, just come down <coughs> to complacency, perhaps the travel factor as well? Yeah, I think certainly in that particular match there was some complacency. Um, you know, I think they sort of had in their minds, we banked the five points, we're just going to head back after this one game. But, you know, that obviously came back to haunt them a little bit. I think they're very lucky to pick up any points, or, or mm. certainly the draw. You know, it looked like they were going to leave with a one point for losing by seven or more or fewer. So, <coughs> but the, the expansive game that they're both trying to play, obviously we, we know the Bulls are pretty much a ten-man mm. team, um, and they've played that sort of style for many, many years, going back to the sort of nice water era. And, you know, they're all trying to throw the ball around, trying to be more like the New Zealand exciting mm. teams that you know bring crowds to the stadiums but it's if it's not sort of in your DNA I'm just not mm. sure if you can sort of fake it and fake it uh, under pressure that suddenly we know how to throw the ball around you know the Sharks have sort of managed to do that I think a little bit better than most um, this, this season you know I've been quite impressed at times with the rugby that they've played the Stormers you know they're also trying to throw it around the thing is the, the Stormers team at the moment they've got a really good pack of forwards their backline players they're just not sort of firing and on, on all cylinders. They've mm. had a couple of flowers. They've had to go through. Damien Delaney's come back. He hasn't really played well. So you've got individual players playing fairly well, but they just don't look like a team that will throw the ball around with any sort of surety. You know, that sort of they know exactly what they're trying to achieve. They mm. just pass it left, right, left, right. Don't really go forward. And then you know, is that expensive or is that just you know what are you doing type thing? 
So you know, a lot of question marks around the South African teams, but when you look at the New Zealand teams and how they manage to score tries seemingly at will, and you know they're just banking the points. They've got four teams in the in the t uh, with the top four yeah. amount of points. You know the, the way the, the the tournament is structured this year, they're only going to get one um, quarterfinal at home, which obviously seems a little bit unfair. No matter what happens, you know two South African teams are going to host quarterfinals, and then at you know in South Africa, you'd think that they would be favourites no matter who they play. So you know it's seemingly not um, in not New Zealand's favour, which is perhaps not what this tournament you know was mm. all about. But it is the way it is, and you know it's not going to change perhaps for the next couple of years. So the poor New Zealanders are going to have to grin and bear it. The South Africans, I think, you know, have got the the better end of the stick this time. Australian teams, to their credit, the Brumbies and the Waratahs looking a little bit better um, as the tournament sort of progresses. The Waratahs do have a, a mm. good team on paper, but I think for me that was that was a big disappointment for the Bulls. You know, they had a chance to to pick up a win in their final tour match. Kirtley Bill went off injured in the first minute of the game. He's a big player for them. Mm -hmm. And yet the Waratahs still ran out fairly comfortable, 31-8 winners, tw you know, 23 points away from home. He's a bit of a hiding. You know, and the Bulls did look pretty good in their first match against the Force. I think it just maybe shows how bad the Force are compared to the other Australian teams. So massive match this weekend as the Bulls ho you know, host the, the, the Stormers. You know, that could well decide mm -hmm. who wins that Africa one conference, is, you know what they call it, and if the Bulls do win that at home, um, you know the Stormers <coughs> might have a bit of an uphill battle to you know catch them, especially if they don't pick up any bonus points. And that game is is very difficult to call, you know, based on how the Stormers mm. and the Bulls both played this weekend. So lots to play for in the South African conference, knowing at the end of the day they are going to host two two quarterfinals. I think they're not now actually going to have to be able to worry about what the New Zealand and Australian teams do. They're just going to be fighting for you know, the, the winners of those two conferences.